advising clients where to put their money given the additional scrutiny, you know, looming regulatory uncertainty yeah. and what's happening with Russia and Ukraine and these sanctions? Yeah. So, so those are all really good points. I'm definitely a crypto believer. My fund has investments in companies like Coinbase and Circle, so we're certainly in it. But at the same time, I do think that regulation is the greatest threat to cryptocurrency. And I think that the crypto community misinterpreted the executive order that President Biden issued uh, two weeks ago around it. I think people, because it didn't say, you know, we're shutting crypto down, people were, you kind of breathed a sigh of relief. But in reality, it reinforced all the power that the SEC and other agencies have to regulate crypto however they see fit. So I, I think this should be a bigger concern than it has been so far. How big a concern? Well, look, I mean, Gary Gensler is certainly not a crypto fan. And there's really no reason why he couldn't say, you know, we are going to impose these kinds of reporting requirements or taxation in a way that basically makes some sort of transaction impossible or prohibiting, uh, you know, margin-based uh, lending or requiring a stable coin res currency reserve. That's unreasonable. So they could do a lot to hurt crypto. And I think the point here to me is the crypto world has to grow up politically and recognize that because their greatest threat is regulatory risk, uh, they have to get political in the way that pharma and lots of other industries are. They may find it distasteful, um, but they've got to do it to protect themselves. Now, there's this big ha debate happening, Bitcoin versus Ethereum. We heard what Shanali was talking about earlier. I just asked Serena Williams, who's got her own venture capital fund now, what she thinks. Take a listen to what she had to say. I think uh, Bitcoin has had an amazing boom and it continues to do something amazing and it's it's huge, right? I'm personally um, really in love with Ethereum. I think it, it's just, um, it's more accessible. Brad, are you a Bitcoin or an Ethereum guy and why? So I will say this, I don't invest in the actual currency either way. My view is we can assess whether or not we think a company will succeed and then we can impact the company's future and activities and everything else. But whether Bitcoin or Ethereum will go up and down at any given day is, is usually kind of beyond my, my pay grade. Um, but look, I think there are certain things to Ethereum in terms of the type of blockchain that it's on and, and its accessibility that, that Serena is, is probably right. It's easy to see why it started to become a real competitor. I'm kind of curious. Many investors like you are investing in crypto infrastructure, given some of these uncertainties around the future, around regulation. But from a purely valuation standpoint, are you worried at all that perhaps maybe too much money is flowing into the infrastructure companies at a time where there's still worries about a disconnect between private and public valuations? Yeah, look, it's a very fair point. And I think back to when we invested in a company called Wheel, which uh, telemedicine matching engine based in Austin, Texas, that just had a billion dollar valuation. And I remember literally thinking, if I believe in the future of digital health, then I should invest in wheel, right? I kind of think it's the same thing here. Um, I do think that regulation is an existential risk to cryptocurrency, but I also think it's here to stay and here for the long term. And so look, if it is a piece of infrastructure that the community really needs, I think it makes total sense. I think one problem we often have in venture is because there's so much money in the sector right now, people are investing in companies that solve problems that don't really exist in the first place. So whatever problem you're solving has to be a real problem. And how do you think about crypto investing versus broader Web3? Do you think that the crypto part of the landscape is under or over-invested in here? Look, right now it's over-invested simply because we don't have any Web3 investments and very few people do because no one exactly knows what that means yet, right? But to me, where the two get really interesting is when Web3 is here, when we're in the metaverse, that's in my view when crypto goes from being an asset class to an actual currency. When tons of, of, of transactions are happening completely within the metaverse, totally digital, that's when it really makes sense for vendors to say, yes, we take Amex and Visa, but we also take you know, Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, and so I think that the two really converge um, when the metaverse and Web3 is actually here. Who runs the metaverse of the future in your view and how is that guiding your investment decisions? Yeah, so that's a great question. So the answer is, as you know, is nobody knows. Um, but I think <laughs> where we should take note is 
look, you have companies like Facebook and Microsoft and Apple spending tens of billions of dollars uh, on metaverse development. Uh, they want to build walled gardens that basically keep you inside of their ecosystem and infrastructure and spending money on their stuff as opposed to somebody else's. And I think that the, I wrote a memo about two months ago on how to regulate the metaverse. And the reason I did it was because I know that if we follow the typical path where uh, a technology company comes up with a new idea, they launch it, and then after some period of time, government realizes it exists and start, starts to try to regulate it, that almost never works, right? Um, and you gotta get out ahead of these problems in the in, on the front end. And so I think that if we want government to have some say over the metaverse, and the reason why that's important is um, all of the lack of privacy and portability and data ownership that we have in Internet 2.0 in this country, I think most people would like to have more protections when the metaverse comes and when Web3 comes. And so if government doesn't proactively say, mm -hmm. how do we protect and look out for consumers in the metaverse, then no one's going to, uh, and people are going to have a hard time. I have another question here about venture capital and as, how it changes as it pertains to crypto. Given that people are raising money in so many new and different ways in the crypto landscape, do you think if the VC space doesn't adapt that they risk competing very heavily with crypto investment? Yeah, yeah for sure. So, well, yes to no, actually. Yes, because you're seeing crypto companies themselves start doing internal venture investing. You're seeing funds that are specifically focused just on crypto and nothing else. And they're gonna have advantages in terms of the ability to see deals, to analyze deals and everything else. At the same time, when times are really flush, everyone's throwing money. And if either because of regulation or some other problem, you know, the price of crypto declines significantly, all of these companies making kind of side investments in other crypto startups and infrastructure and everything else may end pretty quickly. So I don't know that the competition has longevity but I do think that right now they have some advantages.